What's going on, Husker fans? Welcome to the Husker Heisman Huddle on the Believe Podcast Network. I am your host, Sam Casacho, joined by fellow hosts and Heisman winners, Johnny the Jet Rogers and Eric Crouch. And our special guest today is none other than Nebraska and college football legend, Touchdown Tommy Frazier. All right. Thanks for coming, Tommy. You're welcome. And you, and you notice you notice I changed my, my, my tag to touchdown Tommy just for you guys. I like it. I like <laughs> it. I love it. I think I even referred to you in a text message between all three of us today. I'm like, hey, did anybody get with touchdown Tommy and give him that link? <laughs> uh, so I, I changed it just for you guys. Tommy's the uh, hardest running quarterback it. in show business. Oh, yeah. You know, I yeah, tried to right. be. You know, they, they you did, what, Tommy. You did. You was. What did they say? Once you, if you're gonna go out there, might as well give it y'all, right? Well, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Well, it depends on who you are. If you're Johnny Jet Rogers, you do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Johnny's had a lot of second over. chances. <laughs> Johnny's, Johnny's had second, third, and fourth chances. <laughs> well, we appreciate Welcome. you, you know, jumping on with us. Um, you know, we've uh, just kind of ventured into our podcasting lives here and we're just uh, excited to talk Nebraska football and this week is uh is quarterback talk um so we just thought you know who better than Tommy Frazier to have on and and uh I don't know just we got you so tell us what you're up to I think that you know a lot of people want to know I always get asked what's Tommy doing and and um you know just tell people what, what family life you know work life the, the, what's what, up? What, the question of what's Tommy not doing, you know, yeah. like, you know, I spend both my time on the vice president for Luther Family Services here in Omaha. And with assistance. What's that? <laughs> you got assistance too. Assistance. Everybody's got assistance. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I got, well, of course, I got to have a couple. Um, <laughs> they spray me a little thin, but, you know, so it's a, one of the biggest nonprofits in the state of Nebraska. We do a bunch of with refugee resettlement, health and human services, mental health, child, foster care, you know, so. We do a gamut of things, and you know, so that's my main job that I'm doing daily. But also, I have a couple other businesses. I have a small construction company that one of my good buddies started about six, seven years ago, and, and that's just starting to take off to where we're doing more of the those the, the small business build outs. You know, we're classified to build up the three fours, but we don't want to deal with that right, right, especially right now with the way prices are on supplies and equipment. So we're doing more just a office build out. So if someone was to call to say, "Hey, we want to rearrange our office," or a new tenant comes to the building. You know, that's what we do. And then I have the Tommy Frazier Foundation, which I raise funds for kids who can't afford to play youth sports, which is which is big right now. We took a couple of years off because of COVID. You know, no, so now that COVID has kind of passed us a little bit, not not completely. You know, we're starting to do more fundraising for that because now kids are getting out there. Parents are feeling more willing to let their kids go out and, and, and be around other kids. So, but there's a lot of need out there for kids, especially with the way fees are, you know, I started, I remember when I grew up playing youth football, you pay $50 and that includes insurance and equipment, everything else. And you go ahead and play. Now you're talking about $300 just for a, dollar, for a deposit, just for, for the equipment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's just ridiculous. So, so I just want to try to help those kids who can, who can afford to help themselves. And the one, the one disclaimer to this, and I don't do any select sports, you know, it's all just regular YMCA or local teams. You know, select sports. I think the, that's where they make too much money off these players, off these kids. So I just want to be able to have them be introduced to a game and something they like and be able to play without having to worry about money. Oh, and then of course I have two kids, one and one who's a sophomore in college right now in Lincoln, majoring in biochemistry. And then I have a daughter who's a sophomore in high school, and she's a national champion cheerleader. You know, so so we're we're just we're, I'm, I'm grooming wow. champions. Yeah, I'm grooming champions. Yes, that sounds like it. Oh yeah, it's pretty it's, cool. You know, I always tell people it's fun watching your kids do something outside of what you did, and and that's the pressure. My son, he has no he has no no love for football or sports. But what you get on stage in front of people doing show choir acapella, I mean, he's like it's like. Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. So he's a totally different kid, and and I just I get more joy watching those, watching my kids perform and do the, do do their best than what I did in college or in sports. Yeah. yeah. Did what was it like? I guess was it hard? You know, I'm. And we both have sons, so I mean, Johnny, we you know playing ball, and all of a sudden the, you know, it's like everyone. So are you fast like your dad? Or you know, you're gonna win a Heisman? Are you gonna win a championship? Are you a quarterback? You know, you, you get there's all these. Right. You know, how did you deal with that? You know, the one thing I tried to do with my son was uh, I tried I try I try to let him pick what he wanted to do. 
Yeah. You, know, you, you have a lot of former players who say, no, you're going to play football. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You know, I introduced it, the, the sports to my kids, you know, my son, and let him figure it out for himself. You know, he, he played football and realized that, hey, football is not where I want to be. But then he, he gravitated to baseball, and he's actually a pretty good baseball player. And I think he went to the first meeting in high school and the freshman meeting in high school and realized the kids, and, and believe it or not, just some of the things that kids were saying about why they want to join the baseball team, it, he just didn't feel comfortable with that. And so throughout his, throughout his schooling, he was always intrigued to show choir and the school plays and choir. So he, he adapted to that and joined the, the show choir at, at Miller West. And, and then it just flourished from there. So, so now he's more, but he's my academic, my, my academic child. You know, so he's more of a straight A student, major in biochemistry, and he still does a show choir and join the a, acapella group. So, I mean, I let, I let my kids choose their own path and I just support them in the way I can. Uh, can you sing? <laughs> Where did he get, get, well, get his vocals from? <laughs> well, 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 of course, me. But you know what they say, the older you get, if you don't train your vocals, then you, you can't sing anymore. So you sometimes you just got to give it up. So I, so I pass it on to him. <laughs> well, this could be your debut. You could start singing right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you Speaking know, of... you, you, I, still, I still do karaoke at different places and stuff like that. Just to have a little fun. There you go. Keep it at karaoke. All right, but, yeah. But here's, but here's the thing about it. They call it, they call it alcohol courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, liquid courage uh, karaoke. Yeah, that's you know, like I need that. People on the um, golf course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> aiming fluid. There's aiming fluid, right? Aiming fluid, <laughs> aiming fluid. But tell well, me, do, speak... you, do you see a difference in, uh, in attitude of... Uh, your kids are academic, so an academic, but what's the difference between an academic focus and, and a sports focus? I mean, you just, in my mind, you just use the same type of focus for a different thing, but you have to have the same type of intestinal fortitude uh, that you have on the field and drive that you have, uh, whether it's in sports or in business and academic education, it's your, right. it's your mindset. Yeah, you, you, it's a mindset. You have to work at it. You know, I always tell people that. You know, sports just didn't come easy to me. It doesn't come easy to people. You have to work at it. And the same thing with academics. You know, you have to work at it. You have to go out and put in the time and the effort to be one of those smart people, to, to be a, a professional in what you want to do. You know, you, if you look at any business person, every, and I always tell people, you're going to fail at something. You're always going to fail, but what are you going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? And people that fail are the ones I like learning from because they're the ones that that, that, that didn't give up. And you, always, you, you can't learn much from success. I know people always say, "Oh, I want to be successful," but you, but if you if you do something right the first time, then what have you learned? You know, so I learn more from my failures. I learn and uh, learn more from anything failure, failure, anything. And so I try to teach my kids that no matter what you do, you give it your all and, and never give up. You know, because eventually it's going to click and something's going to happen. Well, you got to fail fast. Oh, Ted, we all fail. Yeah, we're going to get another fail, but the the key is to fail fast. Don't be afraid to try. To fail fast, because the faster you fail, the faster you get on track. You know what they say: get knocked down seven, get knocked down seven times, get up eight. You know, hey, you got to keep going. It's Edison. How, how many times did he fail with the light bulb before he got it right? I'm still failing. I'm still. <laughs> I'm, still I'm never, never going to give up. You never give up on anything big or small. It will become a habit. That's right. Yeah. Well, hey guys, I think uh, the, the the Huskers of late have have a lot of experience with uh, with failure. They um, should be great. They have, yeah, they should be great. This year, <laughs> all the failure they've been doing. But I, I know they've got a long ways to go, Tommy, to, to experience the kind of success that, that you've experienced and, and these guys have experienced. But what would you say would be the first step they need to take on the road to trying to find that kind of success? I think it's culture. You know, I think and John, and John and Eric can, and can, can agree with me on this, that when we were played there, the culture was there. When Bob DeBenny came in here, he, he completely changed the culture. When Coach Osborne took over from Bob Bannon, the culture didn't change, but he just improved on it. When I came, the culture was already there. When Eric was there, up on the Frank, you know, Frank, the culture was still there. You know, what's the one thing that you don't see there now? Culture, because you've had so many different coaches and so many different leader administrative changes there to where it's hard to, to, to establish a culture. Because every time you change some someone, they bring in their own perspective. And so I think once the culture changed down there from within the program, because I think outside the program, you know, It'll take care of itself. I'm, I know I've been one of those ones who've been kind of boisterous about what was happening down there. And uh, it was more so because I didn't like the culture that was being built down there. You know, it wasn't right. what I came to Nebraska for. It wasn't what Johnny helped build Nebraska for. It wasn't what Eric came to Nebraska for. 
And so when you so all my frustration came out of the culture. You know, I don't know that you're not gonna win all the games, win every year. It's impossible. But as long as you have a solid culture and the teams that are winning, that's the one, that's the one word you can use. Their culture is, is there. And and hopefully the, the this this new this new regime with Trey up there brings back a culture that that that's gonna last for years to come. But you can't do you can y'all gonna win games if you don't have a, if you don't have a stable culture. Yep. That that'll totally happen. I mean, I mean, I, it's it's awesome to get to you know. I Eric mentioned we want to talk quarterbacks. We got you, and we have Eric every week, which is already awesome. So we have a you know a, a ton of riches here uh, in terms of quarterback talk. Um, what do you think of this uh this QB room? You know, under Matt Rule, I mean, you have a new coach. Everything kind of gets shaken up. I think Casey Thompson did a good job last year. Um, but we have tr- you know transfer and uh you know Jeff Sims and just curious about how you see that shaking out is, you know, should there be an open competition? You know, you have a returning starter, but how do you kind of see that going? Well, I look at it this way. No one, when you, when you bring in a new, a new staff, a new coach, no one's job is safe. I don't care if you're a two-year starter, three-year starter. You got to go out and, sh- and show that, that this new staff that you, that you're the guy to be the starter. And so I think competition right now for the whole team is good, especially at quarterback position, because if you look at the last couple of years, when the starter went down, the play, the quarterback play went down because the competition wasn't there. You know, competition makes everyone better. And I, and and what you're starting to see now in the days that kids are running away from competition by transferring. You know, I'm 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 like John was like Johnny always say to be the man you got to beat the man, right, Johnny? That's right. And, and so if you're afraid you to compete, be the best, if you're you afraid to the compete, best, then then why are you playing the game? Why are you playing sports? Period. You know, so I, I like that there's there's more competition there. I think it was six scholarship quarterbacks in that room. Now, you know, that, that's that's a good thing. Now, you're going to lose some of them at the spring ball. No one's going to see the right on the wall. But if the top three quarterbacks there are, are there competing and, and competing at, at a high level, then good things should happen. I always well, like to tell people all the time that, um, you know, John Dutton and Monty Johnson? Yep. Uh, they both were all pro and in, in NFL, played for years and years, you know, went high. They both played second team on our team. Right. They, they didn't start, you know, but when, whenever our first team went down or came over to the sideline, we didn't miss anything, you know, because they came in with the same standards that, that we just left. But guys got to be willing to play for the team, not just for themselves. And those guys you're talking about are leaving. If they don't get to start, you know, they're they want to leave. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a bad thing now for college football, I think. Um, no, it's, just, it's just college sports, period, to where. Quitting is, has become, and then people say they're not quitting, just but they're just looking for a better opportunity. No, you're quitting on a team that give you opportunity, right? Because you didn't get your way. Well, and plus, you know, I, I think the most important thing, one of the most important things on a team, is that everybody, the, the, every player knows that the best players are playing, because if you know that a guy is is better than you, you really shouldn't really have a problem with him starting ahead of you. It's right. just when you play favorites and you put a guy who is not qualified in head of another guy for whatever the reason might be. But when you when the best players play, then you really got a good chance to to make the the, the second team know they're going to get in, but they don't feel slighted because they really realize everybody they they know who's who, they know who's better than what. And yeah. and, and, and that's where that's why I brought in the word culture, you know, because I because I know for a fact there are a lot of times the best players weren't playing in the last right. fifteen years down there. And you know, up on the bottom of any, it doesn't matter if you're Johnny the Jet Rogers, if someone's better than you, that guy's gonna be playing. Right. Same thing with Coach Osborne. The best guy's gonna be on the field playing. And if you want to play, you gotta prove it to him. So we're in the last 15, 20 years. I know for a fact that some of the guys, the best guys weren't playing because of politics. And and that's why Nebraska is where they are now. You know, you go back and look at do you do you do you, do you really think that that Lawrence Phillips and Amon Green and Damon Bennett and Clinton Child, all those guys weren't capable of playing? But but the culture there was that hey the best guy gonna play and they saw it every day in practice you know so right. I just think it's one of those deals to where if the culture's there and you're preaching it that the best guy gonna play and you live by your word then I don't think you'll see it I don't think you'll see many people leave them because then you're gonna win <laughs> then you, you will win winning That's carries how you get a winning team winning isn't everything though Tommy no it's at, not. At, at Nebraska we do rate it right up there with oxygen it's pretty <laughs> darn important <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> bringing this back to like quarterback play um what 
what is like, what was your mindset? Just, you know, how did you conquer the huddle? You know, always talk about, Hey, Tommy Frazier, man, he, he commanded the huddle, you know, like you hear like one guy talking, it's me, you know, that, you know, and that, that, that's, how did you, what was your approach to like being the best leader that you could be? And, and, and that coming from a quarterback's perspective. My mindset was, it wasn't about being the most liked. It's about being the most respected on the field. But by me doing that, I had to go out there and prove to them that I'm going to give 100% on this field. And I expect for you to do the same thing. And if you're not, then I'm going to have coach put someone else in here to get the job done. And, and, and when you and when you're when you're a leader out there, everyone thinks that everyone needs to like you. No, that's that, that's that's a falsehood. Because most most people who are liked don't don't really get their full potential out of, out of themselves. Because now it's a popularity test. Me, I can care less if my teammates like me, but they're gonna respect what I do when I go on the field. And when when I'm stepping in the huddle, hey, this is my huddle. I'm the coach out here. They, they, the coach Osborne gave me that reign, so let's pay attention, listen. And and, and that's the way. I've always done it, and it worked. I won, I won championships in Little League. I won championships in high school. I won championships in college. So it's kind of one of those deals where if something's not broken, then don't fix it. Now I rust people the wrong way, but that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I was good with that. Sometimes most, that's how that's how you push people, too. I mean. Well, most people want to be told what to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, you know, everybody doesn't want to be the leader. You know, when I would go back on partner turn, I told them what to do. Period. I mean, and that that's what they expected. And I expected them to do that. And if they did what they were supposed to do, then everybody, we, we would get results. Right. And that's what we're out there for, results, where people get honors, uh, they get money, they get reputations, they get all the best things when everybody does their job. And it's clear that the only reason why we're telling you what to do in case you might forget what your job is. Right. Because everybody's got a job. And, and, and being a quarterback, it's your job to make sure everyone on the field knows what they're supposed to do and where they're supposed to line up. You know, that's the one – that's why it's the probably the most important position in the game of sports is a, is a quarterback because you're talking about them making sure that 10 other guys are on the same page, doing the right thing in the right position and running the right play. There's not many other sports you can say that with. With the right you know, mindset. With the right, with the right mindset. Yeah. Right. But inherently a leadership position. And not everyone can be a leader. And, 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 you know, that's the thing about it. Not every quarterback can be a leader. And, and so that that's what, when people say, well, he's not a good leader. Well, maybe it's not his mind. Maybe it's not his skill set. Maybe his skill set is going out there playing the game. Maybe maybe he's a he's a, a student of the game. You know, maybe he's just, a, he's athletic, but he's not a leader. That, that's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I was brought here to be the leader. And so I went out there and did the best way. I knew I'd do it. If I was, if I was doing something that, Coach Osborne didn't want Coach Gill didn't want me to do. They would have told me, "Hey, you need to find a different different way to do things." But they never came up and told me to change. What's your thought well, on uh, Coach Rule bringing back? I just kind of had a little thought here about just kind of firing me up, and then I started thinking run game. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, you know that's what we did at Nebraska. Um, how important is it for Nebraska to, to, I mean, I just can't remember the last time, like, I don't know, was it maybe a mirror or I'm, I'm just trying to think the last time that the run game was really a, a relevant thing in Nebraska and how important that is. Well, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it will, it hasn't been important. I think when it comes to different, different schemes down, different things that teams are doing, offense coordinators are doing, you know, uh, it all works. You know, I think Nebraska fans are so used to the full back to eye back that's getting run downhill, the power running game. You know, there's not very many teams that are running that style of offense anymore. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the uh, team, and I go back to look at Alabama, look how much they've changed over the last six years, six, seven years, to where they don't, they're not just lined up and, 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 and running down people's throat. They've spread the ball out. So I just think you get some mindset to where if you have the right players and the right scheme, you know, it, it, you know, run game can work, but I get what they're doing now. They're trying to make it easier for the quarterbacks, and which is which I laugh at that because if, if you're the quarterback, I mean, you're supposed to be the smartest guy on the field. But I but I get that they're trying to control more from the sideline, trying to make it easy for the quarterback to see things. So I get the spread stuff, but I still see a lot of teams running 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 for a lot of yards out of it. I don't necessarily know that Nebraska need to bring back the fullback, but at least have an opportunity. Part of your system is short, so when it's third and one on the goal line. 
you can you can give it to the fullback, let him ram it in instead of trying to get the ball out five yards deep. Mm -hmm. No, I just I, little... I think it's important. The run game is the, yeah. definitely the run game sport. Every team that's won championships over the last few years had a, had a pretty good running game. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. They rushed for a thousand, two hundred yards a game, yeah. but they still had a threat. Well, then that means that we have to go that what's up front that counts. You got to have the line. That's right. Starts you got to focus on you got to focus on that line on offense uh, to push the ball, and you got to focus on the defense to to penetrate. Right. I mean, it's, you it's, know, both sides, or else you're not going nowhere. And I don't think we've done that. Right, and and that's the thing I tell people. You know, until Nebraska get back to the dominant offensive line and a dominant defensive line, you know, they're going to struggle. You can have all the talent on the perimeter that you want to, but right. if you can't get rid of the ball, you can't protect, you can't run the ball. doesn't matter who you have at quarterback. And, and that's what you've seen here in the past. How many right. years to work. Nebraska has some good quarterbacks. They have some good skill players, but they can't hold up because they're getting beat up because you can't protect them or you can't you can't sustain a, a run a run game. And uh, and on defense, you can't, you can't stop the run and you can't get pressure on the quarterback with them. So I think Nebraska truly needs to focus on the front, the front, the front four and the front five. Yeah, Casey Thompson and Trey Palmer last year. You don't get, you know, a whole lot better than that. That they were really good at their positions. Of Trey Palmer, some of the most yards of the you know, Nebraska receiver. And Anthony and was, was and Anthony was good. He just couldn't. Uh, but but Stella running there's nowhere home, to go. Like, yeah, he didn't have a place to go. So I mean, you really got the Nebraska really needs to focus, in my opinion, on the front on the front five. Right on offense and deep, yeah, for, right. for five and four, yeah, yeah. We're used it's to controlling the line of scrimmage. It's what's up front that counts. We're used to controlling the line of scrimmage, and it's just been um, something that we've struggled with lately. I'm not sure, you know, lately, like Tommy said before, you know, all the ups and downs with the coaching staffs and all the switches, and you know, it's hard to get something stable. You know, well, the weight, the strength, the strength and conditioning program. I mean, every time you bring a new coach, they bring in a guy. So you, one guy likes a leaner guy, one guy likes a bigger, stronger guy. What I mean, so everything mm -hmm. changes. So it, it all goes back to culture. And once the culture gets fixed down there, then everything else start falling into place. Because Nebraska have the resources to compete with anybody when it comes to scholarships, NIL money out there. Well, when you have yeah, what do you think of NIL? What's your what's your take on that overall uh, NIL thing and how it's I don't, hit the college? I, I, I don't like it when you have freshmen coming in making a ton of money. I, you know, I, I understand it, but I'm I'm more along the lines make them earn it, make them prove themselves before you before you start paying them money. You know, it's it, you know it's like a professional sports. You get a rookie contract, but you don't make your big money until you prove yourself after your contract. Yeah. You know, like you know, maybe pay the juniors and seniors, you know, yeah, freshman, that, 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 sophomore. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and it's Michael Jordan, I, you know, I, I, I like him because my demeanor was kind of like him when it comes to being a leader and the way he played the game. But he made a statement years ago about when he became endorsement deals. And so, you know, he said when he went out and when he got his first endorsement deal, he had to earn it by the way he played it. Now they're giving endorsement deals and money to kids of potential, which means we hope they can do it, but we, we don't, we're not sure. Well, go. let's go back old school. Make them earn it. Yeah, I think the coldest like Crawford kind of learned that last year. Like he came in he's, as a, he had never set the field, you know, been on the field as a, as a Husker, made all that money with the, which the H was the HVAC ad. And then like things didn't really go right. He tried to enter the transfer portal and it was like, oh, there's not that much, you know, there wasn't that many biters out there and an interest in him because he hadn't, he hadn't done anything, but he had made a lot of money on that age, you know, made a lot of NIL money. So I think that's a good, good point, Tommy. But it's changing the game too. Cause look, look at, look at how many quarterbacks have left schools. They started last year, had good careers and moved to other schools. Cause I guarantee you they got more money at this at the new school. It's happening. It's changing. So I, I'm a firm believer in, you don't pay you, you give them a percentage of the money as far as living expenses, but they, if they don't finish out their career there, then they don't get it. They don't get all the money. There's a penalty for when you leave. That's why I look at it. But just giving all these young kids out of high school, freshmen who haven't really proved themselves just that kind of money is running the game. What what have you heard? I mean, I've heard like or five million dollars, you know, these uh, quarterbacks, you know, getting recruited, uh, you know, offers are huge right now. You know, George is paying. I don't know what some of these. Are. What have you heard? Some of the, the have you heard that same like ballpark or more? I've heard. I've heard one kid been offered seven million dollars. Seven million. Seven million dollars. 
hasn't played a down in college football. And he's and he's a junior in high school. Wow. You know, so it's stuff, it's stuff like that to where it's it's ruining the game. It, it truly is. I mean, and fine, if you want to give him NIL money, then make him pay the scholarships. That's what I said. No, you can't you can't get a scholarship and then turn around and say, okay, now I'm gonna make seven million dollars off my scholarship. But I'm, no, you, if you're making that kind of money, you should be able yeah. to afford to pay your pay your scholarship. I was gonna say they might think about it a little differently when they're in the classroom too. Yeah. When you no, when it gets oh. by seven million dollars, it doesn't make a difference. They're not going to class, Sean. They're not going to class. <laughs> but but what's you afford to the, pay then. But that's what <laughs> happened because it, it was like, why don't you go to class? I got all the money. All I got to do is play a couple of years, and I hope I'm being in the NFL. If not, I got seven million dollars I made. Well, they they <laughs> need to, to base it around some type of incentives, mm -hmm. if, academic uh, if, incentives. If you make academic and 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 and, and uh, winning. Uh, percentages or something. Uh, yeah. You got to do well. How long you've been around? Got to get well, do well to get to get the money. Yeah, right. You, know, you got to but earn it. In some kind of way you can earn. It. I tell you, can't. I, this is the opportunity to hand if you do such and such. If we right. make this accomplishment, if you do create that culture, you're talking about uh, with the the beliefs and and you institute a, a population uh, uh, that, that that we think can go on and on. Right. Uh, we can continuously win. Then then you can earn. That's worth value. That's value for value. But if you give somebody something before time, you just mess them up. They they, they have it's like the, the coaches uh, that they bring in. They give them thirty forty million dollars before they play a game too. They haven't earned the money. Let's say let's go to a bowl game. Uh, let's produce some some uh, uh, some championships of some sort. Uh, uh, do something to earn the money. But to, when you give it to them, what's the point of getting up if you already got it? Special when it's guaranteed. Now, I'm a firm believer in, in all contracts. Hey, this is what we're going to pay you now. You can make this much if you hit these hit these levels. Hit exactly. These, hit these marks. Exactly. If you don't hit these marks, you know you're going to make this. You know, like I said, I never I never thought I'd see a day in Nebraska paying nine million dollars, average nine million dollars a year for a coach at Nebraska. But that's that. But the last coach set the benchmark. I mean, you you have to you have to, you can't you can't pay one guy something guaranteed and drop drop back with a new guy. And and so I. I well, you can, you can, you can, you can, but you're not gonna get the right. You're not gonna get the best guy for the job. You're just gonna get someone that come and fill in in two or three years. You're like, okay, oh, he was okay. Well, he well, we might get some people who are actually hungry. Because I can't see when you come in and get the money up front. Where's the hunger? I, I think we ruin we ruin coaches that way. We have to. I'm, I'm all for the incentives and to get somebody. They have to want to earn it. We just can't give the gifts because it doesn't work, Tommy. Oh, we're on the same page there. Trust me, yeah. y'all. We're on the same page. <laughs> I'm, I'm all, I'm old school. I'm not old, but I'm old school. <laughs> Tommy, what do you think the land? What do you, what do you like envision? Uh, like 10, 15, maybe even twenty years from now. Um, you know, you think about USC and U UCLA coming over to the Big Ten, like power conferences forming. You know, bigger college football playoff. I mean, what is this? What does college football look like in you know ten? 15 years. Yes, I think you're going what you're going to see you're going to have the the top four conferences, the Big 10, the Big the Big 10, Big 12, uh, Big 10 pack, Big 10, Big 12, ACC and the Big East, uh, one of those conferences. You're going to have four major conferences that run everything. Mm -hmm. Then everybody else is going to be kind of like the FCS what it is now. And then FCS is going to go back to being like the the Division 2. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be basically four conferences that that are part of the NCA uh, of the playoff system. Because money is driving everything, and when you start putting money into sport the way the, the way these TV contracts are, you know these these schools see that and gonna want to get a big get a big chunk of that. You know what's Nebraska projected to make in the next couple of years? Ninety million dollars a year in the TV contract they just signed. Why why would a school want to be part of that? Especially coming from the LA market to where the TV market out there is huge. So now yeah. you throw them and throw that market in there. That that those that money can go in probably double what East School is going to get. You know, so I think I think money and TV is what's, what's causing all this. And right, and I, I don't have a problem with that because that money also helps Nebraska do some of the things they want to do academically on campus. Do some of the things they would do facilities. Give them an opportunity right. to 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 go out and, and be part of this, this NIL game with some of the big boys i don't think it's gonna last i mean this nil thing i something uh, something's you can't gotta go happen back. you can't go back well you, you, you no you can't but you, 
You, you can't you can't police it now. You know, if you they, they missed an opportunity by policing it when they first brought it out. They just left it open seasons. And so just like in the state of Florida now, they just passed a law to where the coaches in college can now start helping with some of the NIL deals in the state of Florida. Well, before coaches could do the thing, but it's based off each state now. So you got the federal law, now you're gonna have state laws, each state is different. And so that's what's gonna mess everything up to where some states are can coaches can help now, and so other states they can't. So now the coaches are helping, so maybe that's an advantage more for the Florida teams. Right. And, and so right. I mean, so it's 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 just a I think it's just bad for the game in general. Well, my hope is that we're kind of in a wild west time period for the NIL. Obviously, we've moved in this direction. Uh, the hope, at least my my hope is that as we kind of go, they'll they'll kind of figure out, you know, we talked about you guys have talked about incentives. You know, you mentioned that Florida's, you know, changed the law that hopefully we figure something out where this makes sense for the players and makes sense for the game. Um, at least well, well, what would make sense for the players is I still go, I still remember going back nineteen ninety six or seven. I was asked to go to the NCA to talk about the college student and what can what can enhance, enhance their livelihood on campus and stuff like that. And I say I say back then I say if you I say if, if you give each player an additional fifteen hundred dollars a month on their scholarship check, that should that should suffice. That, that should work out for them. And well, no, we can't pay players. We can't play players. Well, you guys are making billions of dollars off these athletes. You can pay out scholarship athletes fifteen hundred dollars more on their scholarship check. No, we can't do it. Then we can't do it. Now look where you are. Mm-hmm. Now you can't control. What they, they wish do. they could. They wish they would have took that one. Yes. Yeah. yeah and, they, and, they, and, they, and gradually, they, and, and gradually increase it as the years go on. Now, now they can't control it now. So basically, NCAA, what are they? What can they? What can they oversee now? Cheating? How are they cheating? Illegal recruiting? How they're illegal recruiting? They just let them do it. So you're getting recruited now. You're, you know, take yourself back to your 18 year old self. You're getting recruited, maybe 17, 16 year old self, and all of a sudden, like, you got your top schools or whatnot. And it, what, what's good? What is it going to be? What's going to be the deciding factor for you right now? Yeah, uh, if you're if if you're with the, with, the, with the NIL, the school didn't give me most money. You know, I, I didn't. Agree. I didn't grow up in a family where they had a lot of money, you know. Right. I, I had six. There were six kids that lived in a three bedroom home, one bathroom home. So, so let's just one, say a school. House. You know, you got Tom Osborne recruiting you. They're winning. You know. Um, well, I don't think Nebraska's. I mean, they were winning nine games a season when they were recruiting you. Um, but all of a sudden, you get a you get a letter from a school that doesn't win. You know, they're like haven't won in years and years and years, but here comes the check. You take, you take the check and and, and you kind of go, well, man, I'm not, I may not win a game, but I'm going to get paid. So I'm telling right now it's all about getting your parents, getting your family out of poverty. Yeah. Well, when I came to Nebraska, they hadn't won since Jesus was a kid. It was the possibility if I came, we we're going to win and we did. Right. And uh, I think uh, clearly if it, the decisions they're making now are four years prior to the ones they've always been making before they could go to the pros. But mm-hmm. if, if we if we don't give that money to the young people coming up and find managers to help them manage that money, then it's still going to go back to the owners or to the schools and right. they're not getting nothing. So I would rather them figure out ways to work it out because pay for play for no play is still slavery. <laughs> We, you got, you got, if you playing out there and you're generating all that money, whether you're a freshman in college or where you're a senior, it's just too much money out there that other people are making for the pay, people who are generating the money are not getting. Right. So give them as much as you can possibly get them. But we got to get somebody to manage the money and defer it. You can, maybe you can't get, you get put, you put it in annuity contracts where you get so many for the next 20, 30, 40 years or something. But and, somebody got to manage their money for them. Cause that's all the problem is, is that a management of money, you and, know, and, how, and, how you get it, but you got right. to, you don't want to just keep giving it back to the universities or giving it back to the owners of the professional teams. And that, and that, that's that's where I was I was headed when earlier when I said you know put it in some type of account and they finish it out then they get that money then when, when once they're done and, and, and invest in something for them don't just give them to them all up front right away now everybody's situation is different because you know that a lot of these kids that, that are coming from the inner city of New York or the inner city of Miami 
to where they, they need that money to help their parents pay bills or something like that. A portion of it, but the type of money they took a portion of it. But you don't need to give them all of it right up front. And but I mean, I couldn't imagine like $7 million, and I don't even know if that's just for the year, for their career or whatnot, but like, what that's would career. be like career. career? What you mean, seven million? You're like, okay, how 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 bad do you really want to go play in the NFL? You know, well, well <laughs> funny you mention that thing. The, the and I know we get off top when we're gonna get back to the rest football, but look at what the uh, the female basketball player from LSU said. She's like, Why would I go to WNBA right now? I make more money in college than I would mm-hmm. in the NBA, WNBA, you know. So, they, so when, when you, you Fine. Mean, and, 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 and that's her right, but when you when you hit when you hit college players start talking like that, you know it just it, it tells you something. There. Yeah, but, but our goal that's in, in life, football too. Our goal in life always is not really to get awards, just to be self sufficient. So if you get self sufficient in high school, that's fine. If you get self sufficient in college, that's fine. Or if you hit it in in the pros, that's fine. Wherever you hit that that mark, it's fine. So you don't have to go. You could go do other things and develop other parts of yourself if you get the financial part developed early. Right. You have choices. You have options. Mm-hmm. You have access. Yeah. Yep. Different things, yep. which are all, in my mind, good. You know, and if you get it, if it's 13, if you can deal with it, you get it and you give you more options uh, going on until you, to, to your 20s. But if you're earning it, you got to earn it. I just don't, you can't get it for nothing. And that's because, where it goes back to, you got to earn it, me. I don't care who you yeah, are. Yeah, if you got to earn it, as long as you learn, you earn the money, get the opportunity to earn it, that's fine. I just don't want to be earning you money and you get the money and I don't. And that's what happened when we all were playing. Right. They got the money and we didn't at all. Right. We got the $1,500 check or something, whatever they and were then, giving. And then somebody bought us a dinner and we got suspended for a week. Oh, we oh yeah. I ate a sandwich and about got suspended a year. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's crazy. That's right, because that was NCAA. You know what they call that, right? <laughs> no cash at all. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be a. There's got to be a. I was worried there. that was yeah. going to be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, they yeah me too. Have nothing. No cash at all. Not <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man. Oh my gosh. He's got. Well, you, he, you hope that there's a middle ground there. You hope you hope that they find a middle ground to to bring it back to to Nebraska football for for a minute here. Change gears. Um, I, I would be remiss, Tommy, if I didn't didn't ask you one question ab- about the '95 team. Um, you know, we talked about the team in the last ten or fifteen years. You know, they've they've struggled to show up. They haven't dominated up front. And that '95 team was one of the best teams in in college football history. Mm-hmm. They didn't just show up every week; they dominated <clears throat> every week. You know, four you know beat four teams at the end of the year in the top ten by three touchdowns. Right, and that's what people remember about that team. But I've, you know, that was kind of in my beginning of me watching Husker football. And and I was watching an old broadcast of that national title game. And I remembered that that people forget that that coming out of that 94 season, that there was actually some some controversy. It's a bad press around in Nebraska and Osborne at that time due to like the Lawrence Phillips controversy and, and, and suspension. And I've always wondered if that kind of negativity nationally surrounding the team, you know, kind of you know, had an impact on you guys or brought you guys together as a team, kind of put a chip on your shoulder to propel you to the kind of success that, that you had to to win that kind of way every week. Well, I think, I think 95 was just one of those where everything fell into place. What people don't realize is that 95 team, we have four new starting offensive of linemen. Think wow. about it. And we rushed the ball for more yards. We gave them zero sacks. We scored more points. You know, but that, that goes to that goes to the the culture that was there that those guys played a lot the, the first championship year. You know, so I, I, so I don't I think with every program when you become successful, there's there's always gonna be people in the media or outside gonna try to tear you down. But we truly were were brothers from from day one. We stepped on. I mean, it goes all the way back to when my recruiting class when it goes back to Dwayne ninety two recruiting class and ninety one recruiting class. That's where you start seeing the culture change to where we're brothers. And, and it just built up over years, and, and and so when you when you bring a recruiting class that 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 gel and fit in together, there's nothing that 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 can, can tear you down. And that we truly will feel like we're brothers. That you know, brothers fight, brothers get in trouble. Do you do you throw them by the wayside, and you say, hey, we we got you. We you still our brothers gonna pull you with us. And those teams, that's what it was in '95. Even with the whole Lawrence Phillips incident, you know, you still got also understand there was a Christian Peters. Incident. There's a Tyron Williams incident. There's a Reggie Ball incident. To where they're, they're, to where we didn't let that. Then you talk about '94 coming back from, from blood clots. 
and then competing with Brooke for the starting job in 95, you know, that, that was a whole lot that could have tore the team down. But when you have a culture there, you have a system there, you have brothers there, to where no matter what happened, nothing's going to get in our way of, of our ultimate goal, and that the ultimate goal will win championships. Yeah, you talked about culture. Like, I think you kind of just summed it up. Like, you gave us a real window into the the kind of culture that it takes to to dominate the way that you guys did. And I think that's the way that these teams kind of need to proceed. They need to be brothers like that in order to. A lot of teams, a lot of teams, what couldn't handle what we went through those three years. They, I don't care. They could say they could have not, but they 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 couldn't have went through that adversity that we went through and still stay focused on the football field, still stay focused in the classroom, and, and and become successful. Absolutely. So when you, when you when I always tell people, when you take probably the best running back, the best player I ever played with off the field, and you don't miss a beat because the second, the second string, the third string, you get people I realize that Mon Green was the fifth running back as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. Think crazy. about that. And yeah. by the what the fourth or fifth game of the year, he was starting. Wow. But people forget that. You know, you know, you, you still had Damon Benning. Was there? You still just Clinton Childs was next up. You still have a uh, Marvin Sam, um, Jason Sims that was there. Then it was then it was Amon. And when Amon when Amon got his chance, you know he didn't he didn't he didn't let it go. Yeah, he so, took so, it. so that just shows you the depth and the, and that and and Damon Bennett and Clinton Childs could have very easily say, well, I'll, pack, "I'll pack him up, I'll take my ball, I'm going home, I'm going somewhere else." But they understood that hey, we're brothers. That would, hey, we start we're going to start something, we're going to finish it together. And you and that's why those teams were successful. Well, they they believed that they were, were in the right place behind right. those guys, and that's it. And, and winning was more important than who was who was starting. And, that, and that's that. And you can ask those guys; they'll tell you today. I care less what I got five cares. I care less I got twenty cares. Hey, when I got my cares, I'll make the most of it. Absolutely. Well, I, well, I got one more question for you. You were forty-five and four as a starter. No, nope, MB- I'm not. You're not. I was 33 and three at the start of it. I missed nine games by junior year. Oh, the, the team was 45 and four during while you were playing. Yes. But in any case, MVP in three national titles. Yep. What is the most important thing to you about your legacy as a Husker? Not necessarily saying those things. I was trying to set the scene there, but you know, you contributed so much. What, when you look back at your time, playing the game, what do you want people to most remember about you and your legacy as a, as a Nebraska Cornhusker? My toughness. I went out and played the game fearless. You know, I didn't care about, I didn't, you didn't see me avoid contact. You know, I went out and played the game with the reckless advantages, like, like Eric did, just like, just like Mike Grant did, the quarterbacks for me, you know, that, that I was tough. And I was going, uh, that's why I want people to remember from my toughness. You know, I care less about all the stats and all the accolades, but when you knew when you when you turned the game on, you saw me play. You're gonna, you, you, I'm giving them all. Yeah, man. You, know, you, you have to in this system. I mean, the way the way that Nebraska football has been when at the, during those times, like you, you couldn't be a weak quarterback. <laughs> no, you know, no, we're, we're talk- be, there's asked a lot of our bodies uh, yeah. and our minds. I mean, Funny you story. had. Eric, funny story. I know. I mean, a funny story. I talked with Dwayne Harris. Me, Dwayne Harris, hang out all the time. And Dwayne Harris was defensive end from Alabama. Mm-hmm. And we always talk about, oh, how they couldn't hit the quarterbacks in practice. Quarterbacks in practice. And every time I got, I say, hit me. I don't care. Hit me. He's like, so he hit me. And Coach Osborne get on him, and he said, don't touch the quarterback. And I would say, no, hit me. I got to get hit in the game, so I want to get hit in practice. I want to be right. the first one to get hit all weekends in the game. And so he 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 always hit me. And, and he got yelled at, but I was like, "How are you doing it?" <laughs> yeah. Well, Tommy, I'm one uh, for sure who really believed that uh, that you are our Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, Eddie George is a good bu- buddy of mine, but uh, I really think that uh, that was a travesty. Was that a lot about the the, the turmoil that was going on throughout the country about the t- different things that were going on in the team that you think really affected? Uh, those choices because uh, it's quite performance. Jonathan, I can't, I, you know, I'm not in the head of the voters, you know, you know, when you, and I always tell people when you have a, a, a bunch of individuals voting on an award, some have played the game, some of them didn't, some just write about it. You know, they all have their different opinion you know, of, of who they think is the best player. 
you know, you know, I was just, was just honored to just be part of it. You know, I, I haven't lost one night of sleep over it. You know, I'm good friends with Eddie George too, and we talk about it all the time. And and the one thing Eddie George has always said is, I'll take a national championship trophy or a Heisman trophy any day. You know, because to me, it's to me, football is a team sport, and my teammates, whatever, everything I accomplish is because of my team. Whether I won an individual award or not, that 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 don't make or break me. Would have been nice oh. to have it, yes, but I mean, I didn't get it. Oh well, move on. You know, it goes back to who you should should Vince Young won it over Reggie Bush that year. Or Matt Lyon, who the year that Vince Young should have won, he didn't win it. You know, so I think I think it goes back to when you when you have people who are voting on things, everyone sees a player different, and they vote for how they voted for. And that year, it just wasn't for me to win it, and I was just happy to be there. Like I say, I was I was a runner up. Well, we're happy that you were here because to have three national mm -hmm. championships yep. to come out of Nebraska was a statement that went nationally. And I can't remember the last time that who had three national championships uh, back to back to back. I mean, where? Well, it just it goes that goes a testament of what Coach Osborne built. It goes a testament of all the players that came in here and understood right. the culture, and me being part of uh, of helps helping re revitalize that 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 run. You know that 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 feels good to me, but there was a lot of other players besides me that that had a bigger print imprint on on the game than than me individually. Have you ever thought about coaching? I did coach. I coached for four years at Baylor University under Kevin Steele. And then I did a uh, coach a couple years at Dawn College, and then you know then I started having Kevin kids. They're young kids, and a coach at Baylor always told me my son was born. My son was two weeks old when he, when I loved Baylor, and he said, "Tommy, you're young enough." To get out of college, go get out of coaching, enjoy your kids, and then when once they get get out, start their life, then you can get back in coaching. And you know he was right. I'm I'll be 49 this year, and to me, I, I know I don't look 49, but I'll be 49 this year. My body feels great. My mind, I still understand the game of football. So who knows? I've have had calls every year from from different people out in the coaching industry asking me if I'd be interested in this job or that job. But right now, it has to be the right time for me. And right now, it's just not. All right. Well, thank well, Tommy, you. Well, we're right on uh, time here. Yeah, there's nobody uh, tougher than touchdown Tommy Frazier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I appreciate, you guys, have, I appreciate, us, appreciate you guys having me. And anytime you guys want me on, you know, you, you both of you got my numbers, give me a call. Let me know. Absolutely. Uh, All right, buddy. Thank you so much, You're welcome anytime. Thank you, Tommy. We're all family, Tommy. I appreciate you guys. Johnny, I'll see you at the beach soon. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you Wednesday night, Johnny. Okay. Don't tell Eric. beach. <laughs> well, Eric you, buy his own beach. you do or you don't want me there now <laughs> oh you know I want you there <laughs> it's invite only right Tommy that's right, that's right. Invite only. <laughs> well Tommy's a great one but yeah, I don't doubt he, is. he you makes know, he, his history when you say history you talk about his story he's got a heck of a story heck absolutely. of a story I mean, yeah. he had to work for it too uh, the toughness the only way to get and everything man that's the only Nothing way to was get given. Something that, yeah no Yep. And uh, and then, like I said, the other players don't do like you say. They do like they see you do it. And he, he was a leadership in the huddle and off the field as well. So uh, I'm really glad and proud that and Tommy and, and yourself, Eric, uh, came along to Nebraska because without those type of leaderships for others to come around to see, we wouldn't be where we where we are. You know, and at least right now we have had a culture to go by where other players can come to be and develop themselves just like we did. You, we did it, they could do it. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's I, I, obviously always a pleasure to talk to all you guys. It's just, a, just to talk Nebraska football with the best guys to do it. Um, you know, we talked a little bit of quarterbacks with with Tommy, but I'm, I'm curious about, as as always, Eric, what, what your take is on the, on the guys in the room. Oh, I mean, it's still early. Um, I, I don't hold a lot of weight uh, on spring. But uh, they all look, you know, I'm, I guess being at practice, you look at, they're all, they're all looked apart, the man. They're, they're good size. They can run, they can throw. Uh, it, it's just going to be, it's going to come to, I don't know that this thing's going to get worked out in spring or in the fall where this is going to get worked out. In my opinion is during the season. I think, yeah. I think you'll see multiple quarterbacks this first part of the year. I think they're going to have to go with whoever can win football games and whoever can make plays and put their team in the best position and show that they can lead uh, and stay healthy. Um, you, you start to learn a lot about somebody during the game. Um, I, I've seen a lot of guys that practice and they do a great job, but then they're just not the same in the game. 
And I think that that's kind of why I think it'll get worked out as you, as the season goes on. I, well, I think they all look great. Um, you know, I, I don't watch, I, I've been to one practice. So, I mean, I, I can't tell you, you know, a lot of their uh, traits, you know, cause I haven't seen them uh, repetitively, but uh, you know, you hear good things about them all. And I think, you know, with Casey uh, getting healthy and he'll be hard to beat out just cause he's got the experience right now, but, you know, they're bringing guys in because they they just got to win. Well, the interesting thing is, and I, I think it's a good point that you make talking about spring ball because it's going to, I think it'll be impossible to work out during spring ball because Casey is the returning starter, not really playing. Um, So the competition hasn't even really begun. It's really about kind of guys like, you know, Jeff Sims getting his feet wet. I'm um, coming here from yep. Georgia Tech, and, and, mm-hmm. and he's a different kind of quarterback than Casey, right? He's coming in yep. with a guy who can use his legs. Um, he's got a great arm. He hasn't been the you know the most, certainly not as accurate as a guy like Casey, and the way we saw Casey play last year. But a lot of people have pointed out that he you know didn't have the same kind of weapons that that we even have here at Nebraska or at some of the other schools. So we don't you know know how that'll that'll shape out. But it's going to be interesting to see a guy like him. You know, when a new coach comes in, it kind of shakes everything up. Everybody who may have been buried before gets a chance. I know we got to see a lot of Chubba Purdy last year with Whipple as the offensive coordinator, kind of brought him in. But I'm hearing, you know, people are hearing things now about about rule like in Harburg and mm-hmm. different things. And, and that's going to be the interesting part of spring is you got the guy that's kind of the returning starter sitting out and the other guys are kind of working against each other and it's going to, it's going to shake out. It's going to be an interesting time. Um, do you have any thoughts about that, Johnny? Do you well, see anybody down at practice? <laughs> well, yeah, they all look pretty good to me too. They all got mm-hmm. something uh, really going, you know, like, uh, like uh, Har- Harburg is the, the sophomore uh, looking for the future. He's got a, a good deal going and he's a smart guy in school. Uh, he's got a lot of high school awards that he's going into, and he was uh, in the track, so he's fast. Uh, in the, got that 200 yard dash and 400, <laughs> he could take around that corner and just take off. Uh, and with the type of uh, deal we playing, uh, he, he could go a long way. Uh, I like Jeff Sims, uh, also, too. He got 5,500 yards of total offense, three times AEC rookie of the week 2020. And yeah, he's got playing time, too. He got hey. Yep. I mean, we only got four four quarters in a game, and we got about five, six quarterbacks that we need to be playing. Uh, so I, I would think that everybody's going to get about a quarter or so or something like that and see what they do. But I, any any kind of way it goes, I don't think we can go wrong. It just depends on what type of uh, – whether we're passing or, or throwing or how we want to do it. But we got it here to do it. It's just – it's going to be a hard choice, though. And I think who who exemplifies, you know, confidence in themselves and swagger, too, like – you know, and, you got to learn this new offense, you know, you got to believe in yourself and, you know, it's not easy to learn, you know, a new offense. Um, I mean, look what Casey's done now. I mean, think about Casey, he was at Texas, then he's in Nebraska. So he's got another staff now. So he's going to learn three offenses. And I'm not sure what happened at Texas before that, but you know, that's a lot, you know, there's no, well, I think Casey's there. got the edge though, because the team's already been behind him. See, this is all about getting the team behind you. If you can lead yeah. the team, yeah. It's not about, about your stats. It's about just how can the leadership that you've uh, developed and the relationship you develop with them uh, puts him ahead of everybody in my book. And, and, and rule has talked about Casey's ability while he's even just sitting out to learn the playbook. And that's, what's been impressive about him. That's been the, kind of the word around him in spring, but at the same time, you know, like, like we mentioned, you know, Sims, he's already drooled about Sims, you know, skill set and he said he said Harburg's one of the fastest guys on the team and he's a big man so you know I know that he was one of the ones in that practice where the defense kind of got shredded by the quarterbacks and Harburg's bouncing off people making big gains um so we'll you know we'll see we'll see how it shakes out but there's and there's lots of other guys there too Richard Torres Chubba Purdy um Logan Smothers another one sitting out I mean I know we talk about offensive line a lot I was thinking about this just looking good. over who's playing <laughs> we talk a lot about offensive line and I'm like that can't be good that 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 our two guys who probably started the have played a significant amount of games Logan Smothers and Gazy Thompson both can't play in spring because they just got beat up that much number one and number two are down so like that's and from the last couple seasons but you know, we'll, we will see, we will see. I think it's a, I, it's a room I'm not that concerned about, but I do think it's interesting point that you make Eric about 
it not being one, you know, I hope it's not, you know, people were switching out guys in, you know, during the game, but I think we might see one quarterback begin the year. And at some point, maybe somebody else comes in and starts, you know, depending on how things go. Um, oh, it's been about winning. I, I think we could have three or four different uh, offensive strategies in one game. So they got so many different types of quarterbacks. Obviously, awesome. we just want to win games. <laughs> yeah, well, we can win them, and like I said, we give you a different look every quarter. <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> that'll be good. Yeah, that'll keep you on your feet. Huh? Well, if one guy's got a little better, you know, uh, ability to run, you know, they're probably going to run him a little bit more. It just makes complete sense to do something like that. If, uh, if a guy like Casey can throw it a little bit better, you know, maybe you know you're going to see him throw a little bit more, um, and, and use the running back and running game. So I don't know. I just, uh, I mean, jury's out for me. No, well, it's yeah. always the element of surprise. <laughs> but I do think it's got to be, an, you know, obviously a wide open competition. I hope that they haven't told anybody that they're going to, no, you know, no, get to no, take no, it. I can't or, they can. Definitely I, not. I, 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 I they don't have anybody. They don't happen. have any first, second, third strings, anything like that. Everybody's wide open. Nobody's has a, a, a title to any type of position on the field at all. Every It's up for everybody to earn and to get. Well, I hope we'll uh, get to talk about that next week when we uh, preview the spring game and and talk a little bit about how some of these guys are going to fit in with the wide receivers and and what that'll look in Satterfield's offense. Um, that's our show for this week. This episode presented to you by Bet Online. Um, tune in next week as we uh, preview the spring game. And as always, go Big Red. Every day is game day, y'all. See you later, fellas. Mm-hmm.